Hi everyone, my name is Med to Med. This video is going to be about core pulmonale. These notes are based on the following resources. I've been using Scott's Notes, the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, and NICE Guidelines. I've also recently bought the book Zero to Finals and it's proven to be really useful for all of my revision. As a disclaimer, I am a third year medical student. This video is not intended to be a substitute for any professional medical advice and you should always consult your doctor about any health concerns. Let's just have a quick recap of the heart circulation. You can see in the blue this is the right hand side of the heart. Remember this is mirrored because you're looking at the person so it's their right. The blood flow enters from the vena cava, whether that's inferior or superior into the right atrium labelled RA on the diagram. This then goes through the tricuspid valve and enters the right ventricle where it is pushed out the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary valve into the lungs in order to be oxygenated. Whereas on the left side of the heart in red, you have the blood that's coming from the lungs, so it's oxygenated, and enters through the pulmonary veins. This then goes through the left atrium, through the mitral valve, into the left ventricle and is pumped to the rest of the body through the aortic valve into the aorta. When there is resistance and increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries, there is back pressure into the right atrium, the vena cava and the rest of the systemic venous system. Core pulmonale is right-sided heart failure, so the deoxygenated side of your heart, which is caused by respiratory disease. The respiratory disease leads to an increase in pressure in the pulmonary arteries and backflow into the right atrium. The vena cava also is affected and the systemic venous system. In summary, this is chronic pulmonary arterial hypertension. There's quite a few things that can cause core pulmonale. COPD is the most common. It could also be caused by a pulmonary embolism interstitial lung disease, cystic fibrosis, primary pulmonary hypertension, neuromuscular diseases like myasthenia gravis, and motor neurone disease, and skeletal diseases like scoliosis. Often these patients are asymptomatic in the early stages of the disease. They then may develop dyspnea, peripheral edema as the backed up blood flow leads to blood leaking into the tissues, breathlessness on exertion, syncope, chest pain, hypoxia, cyanosis, a raised JVP because of this raised venous pressure, again due to this backflow. Third heart sounds are heard in congestive heart failure from increased atrial pressure. Murmurs may occur, like a diastolic pulmonary regurgitation murmur and hepatomegaly due to the back pressure into the hepatic vein. In order to treat the core pulmonale, you need to address the underlying cause. Make sure to treat any respiratory failure with oxygen. I've got a whole video about the types of respiratory failure and how to treat them if you want to watch that first. Treat cardiac failure with diuretics like furosemide. Some patients may have raised hematocrit levels which is the ratio of the volume of red blood cells to the total volume of blood. If this is the case, then consider venesection. Consider a heart-lung transplant in young patients and, of course, long-term oxygen therapy. Unfortunately, though, the prognosis for core pulmonale is low and 50% of people die within five years. OK, that was really quick, but it's important to understand the basics. Firstly, core pulmonale is right-sided heart failure, which is caused by a respiratory disease, leading to increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries and thus backlog into the venous system. The most common cause is COPD. Patients may be asymptomatic in the early stages of the disease, but some signs and symptoms include dyspnea, peripheral edema, chest pain, third heart sounds, murmurs, a raised JVP and hepatomegaly. In order to treat the disease, focus on the underlying cause and consider long-term oxygen therapy. Of course, treat anything else you notice along the way, like respiratory failure, 
So your usual A to E survey is critical here. Patients with raised hematocrit levels may need venous action. And lastly, prognosis is sadly poor in these patients and the mortality rate is 50% within five years. Thank you for listening and happy studying.